there's a lot of people out there voting that don't know anything about what they're actually voting for. So I've been talking about a website called iSideWorth.com. First, let me stop and let you guys know this is not an ad for that website. They are not paying for this at all, but this is a tool that I, I forgot how I found this out. A few years ago, I discovered this website. The way I could best describe it is a third-party political gauging tool. What it's designed to do is help you figure out exactly what you really believe in. This is a very useful tool. In fact, it's probably the best tool on the planet. I'm gonna introduce you to the tool I'm gonna tell you how you answer questions and then I'm gonna show you the results and how to gauge those as well so that you can be better informed about yourself and about others that you believe you are politically aligned with. And you might be surprised at the results. I know I was the last time I took it. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is go to isidewith.com. Quiz, issues, elections, parties, ideologies, discuss. I don't really spend much time in some of these tabs. According to this, almost 80 million people have taken this quiz. There's a lot of people out there voting that don't know anything about what they're actually voting for. So you wanna click on take the quiz. Before you do that, there's 15 different categories of issues at the bottom. So you click on take the quiz. So again, this thing is broken down to categories, education, transportation, environmental, foreign policy, blah, 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 social issues. But what's important is the last time I told my friends about this tool, they went through and they just answered yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And that's a very lazy way to do this. It's almost a useless way to do this. And here's why. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and do a few examples together. And at the end, I'm going to show you exactly where I ranked compared to other candidates and other parties. And the results might surprise you. I know they surprised me the first time I took this thing. Should people on the no-fly list be banned from purchasing guns and ammunition? I can say yes, absolutely. I can say no. I can learn more about why they're asking this question. So make sure you click this. You should probably click this on every single question if you really want to expand. And is this that important of a question? Maybe not on the grand scheme of things. After the Democratic shooting in San, Reno, San Bernardino, California, President Obama stated in his weekly radio address that this was insane to allow suspected terrorists in the country's no-fly list to purchase guns. I agree. Shortly after Senate Democrats introduced a measure that would have restricted anyone on the federal terrorism watch list, also known as the no-fly list, from being able to purchase firearms in the United States, the measure did not pass after Senate, Senate Republicans voted down the measure. So, should people on the no-fly list be banned from purchasing guns and ammunition? Let's see what the other stances are. Yes, and ban the sale of guns and ammunition to anyone. Yes, but not until the no-fly list screening process is improved for accuracy and includes a due process. Yes, if the government considers you too dangerous to board a plane, you should not be able to buy a gun. No, it is unconstitutional to deny someone's rights to with, without due process. No, this is a slippery slope that will eventually ban the sale of guns to anyone. Add your own stance. This question is no longer relevant and should be removed. Should they be banned from purchasing guns and ammunition if you're on the no-fly list? You may not be on the no-fly list for a dangerous reason, You just, but you're on the no-fly list, so you probably... It's not like you can bring a gun to the airport anyway. Now, how important is this to me? At the bottom, it's important that you answer this as well. By default, somewhat has been selected. I'm going to say this is the least important. Like This is not a very important question for me to answer, but it's important that I answer the question for the sake of this exercise. Should AI be used to make decisions in criminal justice systems? Hmm. This considers the use of AI algorithms to assist in making decisions such as sentencing, parole, and law enforcement. Proponents argue that it can improve efficiency and reduce human biases. Opponents argue that it may perpetuate existing biases and lacks accountability. My only options are yes and no. This question is no longer relevant, which it's very relevant because we are in the, the dawning age of AI and add your own stance. I'm gonna say no, too much could go wrong. How important is this to you? It's pretty important. Should the government promote the use of bicycles by expanding bike lanes and bike sharing programs? Again, these are things you're never gonna see at a presidential debate. They're not gonna talk about this, but these are all questions that are answered by anybody running for office. Expanding bike lanes and bike sharing programs encourages cyclists as a sustainable and healthy mode of transportation. Proponents argue that it reduces traffic congestion, lowers emissions, and promotes a healthier lifestyle. Opponents argue that it could be costly, may take away road space from vehicles, 
and may not be widely used. Here's what I can say about this. Right now my options are yes, no, and other stances. Other stances, there is no other stance as you can see here, it's just yes or no. I'm gonna say no and here's why. We recently took a trip to Europe, we went to Spain and we went to Portugal and we talked to the people are Uber drivers and they all universally hate the fact that there's so many bike lanes. The bike lanes take away the regular roads. The roads cause that much more traffic and you can't get anywhere and it's just a pain in the butt. And so I'm going to say no. How important is this to me? I think on the grand scheme of things, this is such a minor issue because this country has so much more stuff that's more pressing. I'm gonna say it is least important. Hey guys, so it's been a while. It's been three and a half months since I started this exam and I found that they've actually updated the quiz. So after answering 65 more questions, this is where we're at. So it's incredible that I actually agreed with 82% of RFK, 70 Trump, 68 Harris. Okay, now what do these numbers really mean? So when these numbers give you the percentage, they don't break it down based on 100. So I can't be 55% Trump, 45% Harris. What these answers actually are saying is, I agreed with 82% of what RFK Jr. believes, 70% of what Trump believes, 68% of Harris, and the rest of the people on this list. Okay, good, does that mean that I would vote for Donald Trump instead of Kamala Harris because RFK is not in it? Not necessarily, but you also have the ability to kind of break this down into what do these numbers really mean? So this is the presidential, let's take a look at parties. So you have to ask yourself, are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? You think you're one thing, but maybe you're not. In this case, I came across as 70% no labels, which is a democracy, big government, environmentalism. 59% Democrat, 52% Republican. That means I agree with 59% of what Democrats believe in and only 52% of what Republicans believe in. You're still kind of splitting hairs in the 50s. It's still 50-50. 51% socialist, 50% Green Party, working families. And so you can scroll down on this list when you're doing it to find out, okay, what, are these, what do these numbers really mean? Show more. Transhumanist, 44%. Last time I did this, I was, transhumanist was the first thing on my list. And so what that means is over the course of four years, things change. Maybe I've changed, maybe they've changed, which is why this is a very important exercise. Looking at the answers, this tells you everybody that agreed or disagreed party-wise, should the government eliminate all traffic laws and rely on voluntary compliance? Of course, everyone's gonna say no because that would be just asinine to get rid of all traffic laws. You also have ideologies and answers. Well, let's go back to elections. And since RFK isn't in, we'll take a look at Trump and Harris. So what you can do is you can compare answers. See here at the bottom. And it also tells you I'm in Arizona, so I agree with Kerry Lake, 68%, and Ruben Gallego, 66%. For vice president, believe it or not, this thing says I agree with Tim Walls more than J.D. Vance by four percentage points, which is a pretty decent amount of difference. But what I want you to do is go to compare answers because just because I agreed with one more than the other, just because you might agree with one more than the other, does not automatically mean that they are more favorable for you. So I'm gonna go to filters, and I'm only gonna pick the people that I'm interested in learning about. So we'll go with Donald Trump, we'll go with Kamala Harris. And just for the sake, we'll add RFK Jr. on here as well because he was on here originally. And we don't have the vice presidents on here and you have the opportunity to break it down by topics as well. So just across the board. This first question, should police officers be required to wear body cameras? I said yes, Kamala Harris said yes. RFK Jr. said yes. Donald Trump says no. RFK said yes, this will protect the safety and rights of police officers and citizens, which I agree with. Trump said no, it should be a police department's or officer's choice to wear one. I disagree completely on that. I think police officers should wear body cameras. And it's not only for the protection of the citizens, but just like RFK said, also for the police officers when stuff goes sideways and it's you versus them. He said, she said. I think it's critical. I think it should be required. Here's one that everybody agrees on. Should the Supreme Court justices be prohibited from making financial transactions with people who have vested interests and court outcomes? Of course it should be prohibited. We all agree on that. Let's see if we can find something a little more controversial that seems to split our country. Here we go. Should people under the age of 18 years old be able to receive gender transition treatments? I said no. 
Children should not be allowed to make irre irreversible life decisions. RFK said no as well. Donald Trump says no and banned all gender transitioning treatments. I wouldn't ban all gender transitioning treatments. I think once you're old enough, considered an adult to make those decisions, you should be able to make those decisions. No kid and no parent for a kid should ever make those decisions. Kamala Harris says yes, but only for non-surgical treatments such as puberty blockers and hormone therapy. I fundamentally disagree with that. Should drilling be allowed in the, in the Alaska Wildlife Refuge? I said no, Kamala Harris said no, RFK Jr. said no, Donald Trump says yes, as long as it does not adversely affect the majority of the wildlife. So yes, in contained areas, I said no, it's a wildlife refuge for a reason. Should children of illegal immigrants be granted legal citizenship? I don't think so. Trump says no, they need to apply like everybody else. I know that's kind of a loophole. Wherever you're born is what you're a citizen of. I don't feel strongly about it. I don't care that much. But in answering these questions, I don't think so. Kamala and RFK said yes. That's not a hill I'm willing to die on. Here's a big one. And I don't know how anybody could feel differently. Maybe I'm old school. Should a photo ID be required to vote? You have to have an ID for everything. Don't you think voting should be something you need to have ID for? Everybody said yes, except for Kamala. It will disadvantage those who do not have the resources to obtain one. A state ID is not expensive. And there's a lot of stuff people are buying with money that they do get from the government. I think you can shell out for an ID, unless you're trying to have people that don't have IDs vote. Should the US go to war with Iran? We all said no. Should the US increase or decrease foreign aid spending? Trump, RFK, I believe we should decrease it. Kamala Harris says we should increase it. Should immigrants be required to learn English? I said yes, Trump said yes, RFK said yes, Kamala said no. I think you should be required to go to class even if the state or federal pays for it. You should have to go to class so you can communicate basically. You don't have to give up your original language. And that's what Kamala Harris is saying. We should embrace diversity the immigrants add to our country. We are embracing the diversity, absolutely. But being able to speak the language and communicate in the language, I think it's very important to any country. If I go to China and decide to live, I should be required to learn as much Chinese as possible because I'm in their country and that's their official language. Two more before we go to the actual political parties. Should victims of gun violence be allowed to sue firearm dealers and manufacturers? Three of us said no. One of us said yes. Kamala says you should be able to. If I buy a gun and somebody takes my gun and shoots somebody else, and my gun is Smith & Wesson, should the victims be allowed to sue Smith & Wesson? No. They should be suing me or my family, not the gun manufacturer. That's like suing Ford for someone getting drunk in a Ford F-150 and killing a family of six. It's not Ford's fault, it's the drunk driver's fault. And I think anybody would agree with that. So let's apply the same thing to guns. It's kind of the same deal. And this is coming from somebody who doesn't even own a gun. This is a big one for me. Should it be illegal to burn the American flag? I know it's the first amendment. And I've said this many times and you're gonna hate me in the comments, the best thing about our country sometimes is the worst thing about our country. I think the freedom of speech to a certain extent, this thing was written in 1776. So the freedom of speech to a certain extent needs to be addended, needs to be revised. I personally think it should be illegal to burn the American flag. This is a violation of free speech. I get it, RFK and Kamala. I just personally think it should be punishable. I don't think you should go to prison, but you should not be able to burn the American flag. I don't think that should be legal. Should sanctuary cities receive federal funding? Three of us said no, one person said yes, Kamala Harris says yes. Now let's take a quick look at the political parties. So again, this is the part that really threw me off when I originally took this test four years ago, because again, I had no idea who, what a transhumanist was. And I was 51% Republican and 50% Democrat, so it's 50-50, which makes me a moderate middle. I think right now I'm a moderate left, moderate left leaning. Doesn't mean I have to vote Democrat, doesn't mean I have to vote Republican, but based on my answers and based on your answers, this is gonna tell you. But again, you need to answer the question, you need to expand for more questions when it's available, and you need to weight your question. How important is to you? Very important, somewhat important, least important. And if you don't gauge the importance, you're gonna look like you're right down the middle, and very few people are right down the middle on the biggest of issues affecting our country. So everyone, thank you for watching this video. If you found this useful, give me a thumbs up. Comment below if you're planning on using this tool. This is not the typical video that I do on this page. This is my podcast page, uh, Automotive Podcast. But we do talk about things such as politics from time to time. 
So I'm not gonna ask you to subscribe if this is the content that you like, because this is not the content you're typically gonna get. But if you found this useful, go ahead and drop me a tip. I could take tips down there. Thank you so much for the love. Keep your comments civil. I'm just here to help you guys use a tool that helps you make a better informed decision and learn a little bit of something about yourself because you may have always voted Republican, but maybe this year it's time to vote Democrat. Or you may have always voted Democrat, maybe it's time to vote Republican based on this. Because at, at the end of the day, it's really all about you guys. It's not about the people running for president. It's about you and what your thoughts and feelings are because we're the ones who are gonna shape the future of this country. Again, this is isidewith.com. For this quiz, it has nothing to do with me. They're not paying for this at all. And if you log in and create an account, it's gonna save it to where you can go back and look at your answers. So, and please share this video with somebody who might need to evaluate themselves off this tool. Again, it opened my eyes big time back in 2019 and I'm glad that I took the quiz. Thanks guys. The Hard Parking Podcast, a little bit of cars, so much more available anywhere you get your podcast or check it out at hardparkingpod.com.